The U.N. Security Council today expressed what it called deep concern over the security and humanitarian crises in Haiti. The Caribbean nation is in free fall without effective governance or protection from gangs that routinely terrorize innocent civilians. That has left people reeling from the violence and others hopeless, determined to leave. Special correspondent Marsha Biggs reports from the capital of Haiti, Port-au-Prince. It's a scene of utter chaos. This passport office in Port-au-Prince overrun with Haitians desperate to make it to the United States. Demands for new passports have reportedly gone from 1,500 a day to more than 5,000 since the launch of a U.S. visa program that the Biden administration is calling humanitarian parole. You need a valid passport just to begin that application process. 20-year-old Ange Marie has been camped out there, waiting her turn for three weeks. She says she doesn't want to betray her country, but she cannot stay. Every day, the gang territory is expanding. They take some more every day. We can't live like that. Can you tell me where you're sleeping? Right in front of me there. Is it scary to be here, sleeping here at night? Oh, we Yes, I'm afraid to sleep here because there is gunfire and you don't know where it's from. You never know when you are going to be the victim. Victim to a wave of gang violence that has Haiti gripped with terror. Hundreds of thousands have fled and now remaining residents are taking matters into their own hands. Two weeks ago, an angry mob beat and then burned alive more than a dozen suspected gang members. It's fear and frustration born of a long-running economic and humanitarian crisis that worsened in July 2021 when President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated. Interim Prime Minister R.L. Henry didn't keep his promise to hold elections, and Haitian politics have since fallen apart. Now criminal gangs have flourished, where official authorities no longer govern. Port-au-Prince is a city held hostage by gangs. We were just talking to some people here on the street about the situation, and, and they were terrified to speak. They said, if I speak today, I'll be dead tomorrow. But for women, the weapon of retribution is often rape. The UN estimates almost one-third of women and girls in Haiti have been victims of sexual abuse or violence. 20-year-old Susfani has been on her own since her mother died last August. Her only family is her son, 17-month-old Ainsley. His father is a man she had been involved with since she was 12 years old. But she says she never knew he was in a gang. We've hidden her face for her own safety. The owner of the house where I rented a room told me that he didn't like when those type of people come to his house. That time I didn't believe him 100%. It's later when I went to sell downtown and I saw him with a bunch of guys with machine guns. That is when I finally totally believed it, that he was in a gang. That night I told him not to ever come back. But he did come back with six of his friends. The minute they came in the house, they started beating me up. Some beat me with a wooden board, some beat me with a gun, and some beat me with electrical wires. They asked me how come I wouldn't get back together with him. Where did I get that rebellious spirit? Then they raped me. When they finished doing what they were doing, they threw the baby at me and pushed me outside. They threw your baby at you. Was the baby hurt? Was the baby crying? Yes, he was crying, and his leg was injured. What's going through your mind right now? Every time I tell this story, it's like, if I felt it again, it's like I relived it again. That is what is in my head right now. I'm so sorry. I was ashamed. I didn't feel like a human being anymore. I didn't want to go out. Even people who didn't know what I had endured, I couldn't look them in their eyes. For three months, she was homeless. She says if it weren't for her son, she would have killed herself. But then recently, a beacon of hope. The local women's shelter unites her with other victims and a psychologist, which she says has helped with the shame. But she still worries that Ansley's father and his friends will come looking for her again. Can you go to police or is there anything that you can do to make to feel safer? I didn't go to the police because the policemen cannot protect themselves, so they cannot protect me. This is where we are right now. 
The police are no match for the gangs. Gary Pierre Pierre is the founder of the Haitian Times, an English language publication that covers the island nation. About 30 to 40 percent of the police force are, are either sympathizers or downright members of these gangs. The police missions have become suicide missions because the gangs are waiting and are laying and waiting for them. The UN has called for the deployment of an international force. But the problem runs much deeper, Pierre Pierre says. What happens next? How do you integrate the gang members into civil society and get them to jobs and dismantle the gangs? Because at the end of the day, it's a social economic problem that we, we have that's creating this. In the meantime, residents living in areas of intense fighting are all but abandoned. It's just too risky to go in and out, including for us. But we were able to make the trip with Jose Ulis, who manages a hospital in one of those neighborhoods. So we're on our way to the Fontaine Hospital, which is the last remaining, last standing hospital in Cite Soleil, one of the most violent areas in all of Port-au-Prince. We're here in a fully armored vehicle because we have to cross several front lines to get there. We held our breath on this last part of the journey as just down that road lies what's called the Death Crossroads. But once we reach the hospital, an oasis of sorts from the fear. Mothers bring their babies for vaccinations, and hospital staff does everything from teaching vocational skills to treating gunshot wounds. Ulis says he's been able to stay open because the majority of the staff are from the community, and because they keep no records or alert police when they treat injuries of gang violence. We don't need to know where you come from, why you are here, no. We don't have question, no question asked. You have a bullet in your, in your leg, we move it, we give you medicine, and go away. Today, there are no gunshot victims, but rather the daily medical procedures vital in any community. This woman is having a C-section. Anxious relatives wait in the hallway for their loved ones. Where would you go if this hospital didn't exist? We would perish, we would die, because it is the only hospital that is left. Cite Soleil is now an area that is abandoned. You walk in the street, you are afraid. You get to your home, you are afraid. Everywhere, we are afraid. We don't live in peace. Patient and maternity. But the hospital is a safe haven for even the tiniest patients. Haiti has the highest infant mortality rate of any country in the Western Hemisphere. Babies are often born at home or in the street, because a trip to the hospital just isn't safe. Like this baby. She was born last night, delivered at home with an infected umbilical cord, which untreated could lead to sepsis and then death. Her mother, 17-year-old Rose Bianca, got her to the hospital, even though she says she's scared even to walk in the streets. I am really afraid because of how things are right now. Bullets flying in the air from everywhere, and you can't know exactly where it came from. I have to take the street with lots of caution nowadays. Are you scared for the baby? Yes, I am scared for her a lot. At our final stop in the hospital, we walked into a room full of little ones. Sick and malnourished when they arrived, most were abandoned when their parents were killed or could no longer care for them. Now thriving, we asked how long they could stay. They can stay forever, we're told. They are home. As we were about to leave, we noticed Rose Bianca, cradling her baby girl, less than 24 hours old. She'd been discharged and was negotiating for a ride home on a motorbike. Carefully, she and her sister climbed on the back and ride off with her newborn baby into an unknown future. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Marsha Biggs in Port-au-Prince, Haiti.